Hello, little partner. All right, you need to do some work, okay? I am tired of doing all the work, lab partner. You gotta pull your weight, come on. Okay, here's what we got. I know you did this already. You added those two and got the total amount of mass of the magnesium in the dry crucible. Then afterwards, we masked the crucible with the residue afterwards, and we got this. You need to come up with those. Yes, you do. The first one says mass of residue in the magnesium oxide that was produced, because that's what we did. We produced magnesium oxide. Um, marker, marker. We had magnesium ribbon. We combusted it. This is a combustion reaction. Yes, it is. Oxygen combustion reaction. We're eating it, burning it in the presence of oxygen. Uh, it's not a classic one. It's not a hydrocarbon, but it's a combustion reaction or a, or a, um, a synthesis. Mm -hmm. And we got magnesium oxide out of it. That's the reaction. Not balanced. You balance it. Okay, now. So we ended up getting some of this. That's the residue that was produced. That's that white powdery stuff that was left in the bottom after the... We ignited it, okay? And I just ended up, I just a few minutes ago, cleaning it out. No, oh, oh, when I cleaned that out, when I added some water to it to clean out that, that residue in it, oh, it was like the worst. I mean, it was the worst ammonia smell that I've ever smelled. I mean, well, in, in this lab, it was like super strong. We did a great job here, lab partner. We, we really fried that bugger and we got what we needed to get out of it. When I added that water too, I was like, Vroom. it was actually for a second there, it hit me. I'm like, wow. That was a high school flashback when I got hit in the head with that line drive. And the athletic trainer came over and went, mm, are you alive? And I went, Bruh. yes, I got that. It was a flashback. I was scared. And I'm glad you were there for me, though. You, you were there for me. You talked me through it. Oh, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Uh, thinking, thinking, where was I? Oh, yeah. And then, so after I got it all cleaned up, I went through and I did the calculations already. So I know, because I just wanted to make sure that we got viable numbers um, and, and making sure that we did a good job. Uh, and we did. In fact, we got numbers which I think are awesome. Oh, that means the numbers are going to come out to be perfect. No, they're not going to be perfect. They're going to be good, and, but not perfect, which is perfect. I'm confused. How can it not be perfect? Can it be perfect? Because there is room for talking about possible lab errors. And this is perfect. This lab, if you look at this lab, this lab here is empirical and molecular formulas. So we're doing, we're going to do some percentages. We're going to do a little bit of percent composition. And then you're going to do empirical and molecular formula of what the formula should be. Now, we know that magnesium oxide should be this. And you're going to see if you got that. And you're going to do the math, and the calculations lead you through that. So in the past, I've gone through every calculation. I'm not going to do that this time. No, no, no. Now, I will tell you this. Mass of the residue, magnesium oxide produced, you're going to take the mass of the crucible and residue after heating and subtract the mass of the empty crucible. Subtract those two numbers, and that will give you the mass of the remaining residue. Then, the mass of the oxygen in the magnesium oxide. Now remember, here's what, you, here's what we did. We started out with magnesium ribbon, right? And the magnesium ribbon's mass was 1.325, 1.352, we'll reverse that. And the mass of this, you just calculated while I was doing this, right? You did your job. You, you, you subtracted, Okay, the crucible, plain crucible, 17.145, from the mass of the crucible and the residue. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And you got like two point something, right? Two point something. Um, so this, you calculated it right now. I got two point something. Yes. Write it down. So this is what the magnesium was. This is the magnesium plus oxygen added to it. Well, what's the mass of the oxygen? How are we going to get that? How do we get this? It's that plus that equals that. That's what the equation says. So take the total mass, the two point something which you calculated from the second one from the bottom up, mm, you did that, and then subtract the mass of the magnesium and you'll get the mass of the oxygen. Um, it's two point something, uh, two, it's probably like 0.8 or something like that, right? The mass of the oxygen, but you do that calculation. All right, then you have all the data. That'll fill in our data table. Okay, once you do those subtractions, you'll get that, get those, get that data. All right, so you could get two point something and like 0.8 something, and all right, write those down. Now, then it says, using your data, calculate the percent composition of magnesium oxide. Using your data, 
calculate the percent composition of magnesium oxide. Remember how to get percent composition. To get percent anything, partial divided by whole. Very good, lab partner. Partial divided by whole. Partial divided by total. So we want to get the percent composition of this bad Larry right there. And that two point something is your total mass of that bad Larry right there. That's your total. We want to get the percent of each one of these. So take the part, for example, for magnesium, the percent for magnesium will be 1.352 and divide it by the two point something that you calculated. Partial divided by whole. That'll give you the percent of the magnesium. Now, of course, you can just take whatever answer that is, subtract it from 100 and get the percent for the oxygen, That's, which should work that way. But do this, take your 0.8-ish something here, that's your, that's your partial mass of the high oxygen, and divide it by the two point something, and that'll give you the percent. And you, you wanna make sure they both add up to 100, or you know, they're really, 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 really close, like 99.9 .9 or something like that. And that'll give you your percent composition. All right, so now the second one, um, I wanted to point something out. Because, and I wrote this down when I wrote, you should read along with me, lab partner, using your data, Calculate the moles of magnesium and oxygen. Now on here I put it O2, that's a habit. Because of course whenever I write oxygen by itself, or whenever oxygen is by itself, it's diatomic, you know that. Okay, so I wrote oxygen is O2. It's gonna be easier for you, and don't make the mistake of screwing up your calculation. Put, put, put the word oxygen there, and I think that'll help you out when you do your mole calculation, because the oxygen is in the magnesium oxide, so it's not diatomic. You know that because it's not diatomic. It's not, di it's not using the, the, the two here. So cross out the O2 and just put the word oxygen in there. I should actually go back and make that typo correction. It's not a typo, actually. It's nothing wrong with it. It's just that it'll screw you up uh, when you're doing your mole calculations if you're not careful. So go ahead and cross out that O2 and put the word oxygen in there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna calculate what, how many moles of the magnesium that we use in the lab and how much oxygen we use in the lab. So remember, mole to gram calculation, or gram to mole in this case, gram to mole calculation. So you get your grams of your magnesium, so 1.352, all right, and this is grams. Yeah, 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 that's grams, magnesium. And you're gonna put grams in the bottom, you know this. You know this, lab partner, you do. And we'll put moles in the top. Moles of magnesium on the top, and when you know one goes next to the mole, you're gonna look up the mass of magnesium. We're gonna put it there, and you're gonna divide. And carry it out to three significant digits. Three significant digits. Three significant digits. If you take one and divide it by the mass of this, which I'm not gonna tell you, you're gonna have to look it up. You're gonna have to look it up. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a number which is going to be 0, 0.0 something. Yeah, because it's less than 10%. So 0.05%. It's about 5%. Point zero something. But that zero is not significant, remember. That's, that's the first decimal. That zero after the decimal point is not last, and it's not bracketed. So you're going to get point zero. Then do blah, blah, blah. Do that calculation out and go three significant digits, which means you need the fourth number in the point zero, blah, 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 and count that. Okay. Get that answer. Then do the same thing with oxygen. This is where you've got to be careful because that's why I told you to make this, this correction on the sheet. Or I said you change. It's not a correction. It's still O2. But when you do the oxygen, and this comes out to be 0.8, blah, 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 and make sure you put the blah, blah, blah in. So this comes out to be 0.8. This is the oxygen, mass of the oxygen, okay, from our data table, which you've calculated. Mass of the oxygen is 0.8. Blah, blah, blah. Don't really put blah, blah, blah in there. Just put the number in the calculation. Thank you. And then you're, this is grams of oxygen. Oxygen, not O2. O, because that's in the compound. It's not diatomic here. So this is the grams of O. One mole of O, not O2. If you put O2 down here, you're going to double oxygen and put 32 there. Wrong, ant, eh, wrong, ant, eh, wrong, ant. Eh. It's just oxygen because it's in the magnesium oxide. So put 16 down here, 16, and don't double it. Don't make it 32. 
And that's what sometimes students will make that mistake when they look at that. They go, oh, it's O2, so I'm going to make it 32. No, it's not. It's O. It's O. So it's the oxygen in the compound. So put 16 down here and get an answer. And once again, this is going to be small divided by a number. It's going to give you a point zero something. And go three significant digits. So that's four numbers out. So point zero, broom, 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 three numbers. This is where I said the data is perfect. I did the calculations on that. And you're going to go, that's not perfect. Okay, that's not perfect because you know that in the actual compound, the ratio is one to one. One mole to one mole. Therefore, those two numbers should come out to be the same. Yeah, in a perfect chemistry world, we have that little perfectness, but you know, I am not perfect, okay? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know I'm disappointed in some of you, I know you think I am, but I'm not, trust me, I'm not. When that baseball hit me in the head, oh, things change big time, okay? It explains a lot. Now, where was I? Oh, oh, but the data comes out to be close enough. And what I mean by that is you're gonna look at those two numbers, and you're gonna go, yeah, yeah, I mean, I can see with you know, some going to be always experimental stuff you can't control. And remember, we had some of that, that white stuff on the crucible. And there's nothing you can do about that. You have to spread that out. It gets stuck to the crucible. You can't get it off. Um, so there's a little bit. Okay. So those two numbers, pretty good. I mean, those are pretty good. They come out to be point zero. Both of them, point zero. Bam. Bam. Same number there. Then when we get to the 1,000th uh, and 10,000th place, yeah, they're a little bit off. That's fine. That's, that's, that's lab stuff, man, even in a well-done lab. And we did a good job on this lab part. You're still going to get a little bit off. So we can look at those two numbers and say, yeah, yeah they're, they're essentially or close enough for government work to be the same. So therefore, our data should show our ratio. Now, that's all I'm going to say about this lab, because at this point, I've actually said too much. I said, you're going to do it, and I, I said too much. I said too much. Okay, so you go ahead, and you figure out, using the molecular mass, what is the molecular formula. So show that calculation. I want you to show the molecular and empirical formula calculations. The empirical formula you're going to get by just doing this and comparing them. But the molecular formula, I want, to see, I want you to show me the math to get the molecular formula for the compound. Where is it? Uh, here. All right, then answer these three questions. For number two, I've actually given you the first part of that. What is the odor that you detected? It's ammonia. Yeah, and ours was really strong. It was awesome strong. It was like, whoa, who needs coffee when you have that waking you up in the morning? All right? So like sometimes I run out of coffee at home. I'll just crack open a smelling salt and go, nah, and I'm ready. Right. Yeah. And that baseball caused damage. Now, and you also have to do this calculation. But, but where did the nitrogen in this compound, in this secret compound, come from? I want an answer for that. And so you're going to show my cal show your calculations for how to get this, this data. Here's some data. Go back through your empirical formula. Uh, if you don't remember, if you didn't write anything down for empirical formulas, how to calculate them, then go back and watch that video again so you can see empirical formulas and molecular formulas, what the molecular formula of that antibiotic is. That's an antibiotic. And so uh, you're going to be able to calculate that. Go do, go do the math on that. Show me you can do that calculation. And I think that's it. I think we're done with this lab plan, partner. I think it's a good job. I think the data came out to be, shows what we're supposed to get with so a little bit of layaway for a little bit of error. There's always that going to be in a lab, but we, we did well. We did a good job. Um, I'm awake now because I smelled that ammonia. And, whew, okay. All right, lab partner. Um, great job. Great job. I hope you have a good week. And next week when we get together, we'll talk about what we did over the weekend again because we're good lab partners, you and I, and we care about each other. Okay. All right. Bye.